Hey folks, David Stewart here. Because you asked for it, here is an unboxing video. Ask and ye shall receive. This is the Hero Quest Mythic Edition, and I actually bought it on Hasbro's own crowdfunding site or um, platform, which is called Hasbro Pulse. Bought into it last year. It finally shipped and finally came to me. I do believe you can pre-order the regular retail edition at game stores now, so if you want to know what's in it, that is the purpose of this unboxing video. This box is actually empty. This is the box it came in. And the reason I wanted to show this one to you is because um, it actually came with a bit of damage over here. And uh, that's okay because, first of all, it's, you know, double-walled cardboard. But besides it being double-walled cardboard, it is also um, a box within a box. So they have two boxes to protect your game if they ship it to you, which uh, I really appreciated because of that damage via shipping. It came a little bit late because of shipping as well, but that's not under Hasbro's control. Um, that really just probably has to do with all the things that are going on right now. So let's open it up and take a look at some of the boxes that are inside here. So what we've got in here with the Mythic Edition is there's the regular Hero Quest game, um, the new printed edition of it. Now I haven't seen a copy of this game probably in 20 years. And that's one of the reasons I bought it. It's because it came out in the 90s and we really haven't gotten uh, any reprints since then. It's just if you can find an old copy, maybe semi-complete, maybe buy a couple different boxes and, and you can make a complete uh, box like what you would have gotten in the 1990s. Um, so this is a reprint of that. It's not a new edition. I think there's maybe some revisions with the rules as far as how things are worded. But as far as I know, it's a reprint which is exactly what I wanted. So here it is, here's Hero Quest. It's got new box art, uh, very much in the style and tradition of the old box art. Whether you like the old box art or the new box art, that is, uh, I guess, up for debate. But the first thing I noticed, I noticed two things. First of all, it's very thick. It's much thicker than the old box. The old box was like this. Um, and it also says 14 plus which is weird because I think the old one said eight or nine plus. I was like 10 years old when I played this game. So it seems a little bit weird that they go 14 plus. Someone on Twitter actually mentioned that uh, they probably went 14 plus because of regulations and things like that, that uh, in order for it to be younger, there had to be some kind of other, uh, you know, regulation that they had to adhere to. And if they just made it for older kids and they, you know, they wouldn't have to adhere to that. So I wouldn't take that 14 plus too, too seriously um, if I were you because it's the same game as we had in the 1990s. So I like to just cut these little stickers. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what is in here. Here it goes. There we go. All right. So the first thing we have, this is... Um, Encased here. Oh, here's the miniatures. Oh, great. Oh, this is great. They're in a uh, in a little plastic dish where you can um, see them all. So that's what they look like, and generally they look pretty good. Let's look at a couple of them, and we can check their scale. So here's the the famous gargoyle. Oh, he's really in there. Good. There he goes. Here is the gargoyle for this cracking unboxing. I think he looks pretty good. Um, his axe is a little bit curved, but he's flexible enough that that's probably not going to matter. See how that's curved rather than it being straight? It, it won't matter to my son when we play with it. It seems to have pretty good detail overall there. Let's put it next to the minifigure and you can get about the size of it, about two inches. Boop, boop, boop. A little bit over two inches for the gargoyle. Here is uh, what looks to be like a small goblin. Hello, kitty. So this goblin obviously is a bit smaller. He's about one inch tall. Hey, kitty, you're going to have to get out of the way for this. So we also have the dice, which are tightly packed. Um, this one doesn't quite look like the bunny rabbit anymore. It, it does look more like a, a symbol, a true symbol of evil. And we also have the red dice and everything in there. So these look to be pretty nicely packed overall. They're very, this little plastic thing that they come in is pretty tight, uh, I would say. Um, and I think we have some of our, you know, our player figures. Like here's the, here's the barbarian. Um, it's 
put him up next to a minifigure you'll see. A little bit smaller, uh, but overall he's still as tall as the gargoyle, but his his body's not quite as big. And I like the, the red plastic for all the player characters. These look pretty good, and they're very detailed. Um, I think these would be maybe a little bit small for my taste in painting if you were wanting to paint these, um, but I'm sure you'd be able to paint them if you wanted to. Those of you who are like expert miniature painters and can get the detail on the littlest things here. Um, here is the elf, I think. There she is. Now I think we have gender swap versions of all of these as part of the mythic tier. Um, so if you were playing with somebody and they wanted to play a male elf, it's in there, or a female barbarian, or a female, you know, female dwarf, or something like that. Then all of those things are are in there. There's the dwarf. He looks pretty good, and he does look like a dwarf, like he's he's dwarfed by the barbarian. Very nice. Here's the here's the bad guy. Well, he looks pretty scary there. Got some nice scary skull looks there. This one was a little bit loose in there, but it seems to be still in good condition. That is a zombie or a mummy of some kind. So I don't remember the names of all the little different uh, enemies that you have in the game. This gives a pretty good overview of what we've got here. The, the detail's really pretty good uh, for these solid figures. And um, overall, I think I like them really good. There's a nice little face on the shield here, as well as this great... Um, skull like on his chest if you're wanting to paint these these might be a little bit difficult to paint if you wanted to do a lot of details but um overall i think they're they're pretty darn good it's your boy hp here coming back at you with the fish people a denizen of uh of Innsmouth here coming from the deep to trade you gold and jewels for you know, whatever else <laughs> All right, let's put that to the side. I think there's some orcs here too. Orcs and goblins. Those look pretty good as well. Yeah, everything looks pretty good in here. And then we have another one here. And this one has the furniture. Um, actually, this furniture is very... This is heavy. This is really heavy, this furniture set. Right here is actually quite heavy, as well as character sheets. Um, we have here, floating around. Oh, these are some little skulls. Um, these are really pretty solid, this sarcophagus or, or tomb here. This, ooh, it, ooh, it opens up. It opens up. Well, that's great. You've got a, a fireplace. Nice solid fireplace. These could be painted pretty well, too. You could paint all of these little pieces if you wanted to. And they're, you know, bookshelves. You've got some doors here. Um, here's the, the torture rack. So if you wanted to put that out there, that looks pretty good. Yeah, all of these are, are real solid. They feel like more like resin plastic. Not They're not cheap plastic at all. There's a slight flex to them. They don't feel like brittle, just kind of dyed plastic. They feel a little bit more substantial. Um, same thing here, more doorways. Got a whole fleet of those right there. And then we've got our cards. I think we've got new card art as well. That might have been um, one of the things about reprinting this game is that due to licensing, you probably couldn't keep the same uh, card art that you had always had. Or, you know, it would have been difficult to relicense every little piece of art, figure out who drew it and contact him, track him down and relicense the image. So there's, I believe, some new art with these. Let's see if we can move them like that. Let's see if we can... What do we got? Gem. Tucked into the toe of an old boot, you find a small gem worth 35 gold. Uh, I do like that they keep this spirit of these art styles right here. Heroic brew. Um, it looks really similar to the original art from like back in the 90s. Jewels. Potion of defense. Um, which is just pen and ink, black and white kind of stuff. Um, it does have a newer feel to it as far as some of these details go. Like, these pen and ink drawings didn't quite look like this in the 80s and 90s, but uh, I think they're in the same spirit. They're high detail. They look pretty good um, overall. Broadsword. Longsword. 
And they show the, the object in question pretty simply and directly, Boren's armor, rather than having, you know, a superfluous amount of detail for a picture like this, it's the details that matter. And that's what you really get from good pen and ink drawings, good black and white will have that. Uh, now these cards are a little different here. So I like these. Let's take a look at these. These uh, other ones, you know, the Dread Warrior. These are a little bit more highly detailed. They look very digital, and the cards do have that kind of cross-stitching that you'll see on some of these playing cards. It's not a bad thing. That's part of the lamination. That's that's actually good. Uh, an Abomination, the Fish People, the Fish Men. Um, so these are a little bit more digital, a little bit more high detail. And there's nothing wrong with them, but like you can see with the gargoyle, you start to lose some of the, the detail of what the gargoyle is supposed to look like. They look pretty good. Like it's pretty good looking art overall, but it looks very modern. Um, so if you want the modern look for the art, you're definitely going to get it with some of these. I like the, the gigantic sword, the dwarf, the elf, the wizard. Um, and then you have all of this stuff. So, and we have a nice thick bunch of character sheets. Of course, you can print out more of these if you run out. I don't even know how many there are. There's probably 200 in there, which is good. So you could play lots of times before having to uh, figure out how to acquire more, let's say. And uh, Eva, are you enjoying sitting in that box? I thought you might enjoy that box. I got a kitty over here. Here. It's the kitty in the box. All right, let's take a look at the game board. Ooh, here it is. Wow, it looks a lot like the original. It's nice and colorful. You could play this on most kitchen tables, so I appreciate that. Um, looks to be generally in pretty pretty good condition there for the board. Here's the, the little screen here. Nice and highly detailed. Lots of details, which I like. You got all the bad guys from the cards there. I think in different, some different poses too, so they're not all, you know, they do look kind of digitally pasted together, but it doesn't matter, it looks good. Um, and then you have some monster charts, all this stuff, you know, or like little rule summations. That's all good. Got our quest book. Our book of quests. Ages 14 plus. Prince Magnus's gold. Yeah, these are fun. Castle of Mystery. It tells you how to arrange the board to do uh, whatever content you want to do. You can. It's really hard to kind of run out of things to do. You can also do your own custom scenarios with this too. And this is the rule book. So... Get the rule book. Hey, what are you doing, cat? Just because the box is empty doesn't mean you get to sit in it. The box isn't even empty, cat. And then here we have um, other little game marker pieces such as stairs and that kind of stuff which you can punch out and use. I'm not going to punch those out right now. Hey, cat. I think there's something else in the bottom here. Nope. Well, that's interesting. They have an, a little uh, spacer at the bottom of the box. Now, that's kind of cool because... As you add expansions, you may want to put those things in the bottom of the box um, to save space or something like that. I actually don't know if there'd be room for another another stack of these miniatures or whatever, but um, that's kind of cool that there's a little bit of space in the bottom of the box because I know these things get expanded. So moving on, two expansion packs here. We've got the Witch Lord quest pack and we have the Keller's Keep quest pack. We also have the Mythic tier bonus pieces. Let's take a look at the mythic tier bonus pieces and see if those things are any good. I think what we've got in here are some additional pieces to play with, including some uh, gender swapped versions of the of the player pieces. If you wanted to be, be an elf, but you didn't want to play the girl character, you could, um, you could do that. Okay, so we've got some additional sort of room pieces here, which are cool. A Spirit Queen's Torment quest book. Oh, so we get a whole extra quest book here. That's pretty cool. I don't even remember this. Some cool art on the front. Never trust an elf. The Crypt of Perpetual Darkness quest book. 
I like this. Prophecy of Telor quest books. We get three additional quest books with this mythic tier. That's pretty cool. I'm assuming that they're going to split these up and put these basically in additional packs for people once this kind of gets going. We get the additional cards that came with that. Okay. Bard. Ooh, look at that. Orc Bard. He's cute. Warlock. She's cute. Druid. She looks like a wizard. <laughs> it was wizard. Life Force, Pixie, Shapeshift. So we get some extra, extra cards here to go with the whole shebang. And it's actually packaged really nice. Like everything will go back in this box and you can um, you can keep it separate. You don't have to, to find another place for it. It's a little little goblin girl or something, right? Got the bard. I thought we were getting some gender swapped versions of what was there, but we got something a little different, which is fine. This is uh, another kind of mummy here. Maybe a girl mummy? I don't know. I guess it has a big butt, so maybe it's a girl. <laughs> girl mummies! Because girls were mummies too. And yeah, we got some more orcs, some more abomination kind of fish people dudes more dice what is this another kind of gargoyle here he's pretty cool looking take a look at him oh whoa whoa look at this we got the big one a dragon this would be fun to paint i think look at that guy that guy is awesome well, let's see what's in here. Heroic contents. Five miniatures, four character cards. Oh, there's even more. Maybe these are the maybe these are the gender swapped characters. Well, yep, here they are. Wow, aren't those cool? We've got female barbarian. So there's our female barbarian. And uh, if you want to play a muscle girl, you can do that. That's an option for you with this tier. I don't know. They'll probably sell these as like a separate thing, you know, for retail. I think that's a male druid. There's a female dwarf in here, male elf, and a female wizard. And there's also like an old man wizard in here too. So you could do, you could play with a, a bunch of extra people with these cards, which is, uh, I think is pretty cool. Gosh, it just keeps going. So that's the mythic. That's the mythic part of the box. Um, let's go ahead and see what's in these boxes here. Return of the Witch Lord. I don't remember what the original one was called, but I like the Return of the Witch Lord. Overall, I think this is a very nice set. So we get a quest book. We get more punch outs here and um, extra rooms. And then a a bunch of little miniatures, including a bunch of different kinds of skeletons and mummies. So extra skeletons, extra mummies, and um, an extra door here, a couple extra doors for whatever you want, and some cards. Anti-poison quill. Again, I like these more straightforward drawings. These, I feel like once we started to get to like really highly detailed digital style, not that there's anything like wrong with this, like this looks good. It definitely does. This like highly gradiated, clearly digitally done art. I think it loses some of the charm of just things that are done by hand. That's my opinion. And that's really not the subject of this unboxing video. Here we go, Keller's Keep. Great little cover here. Nice fearsome gargoyle and a dwarf about to get eaten by said gargoyle. It's a gargoyle. One thing I was kind of hoping for with the reprint was that we were gonna have kind of the same miniatures. These are all new and different, but I think they're all pretty good overall. Um, so if you were wanting, and I kind of get it because you, you want to reprint it and maybe people who already have it are going to buy it. So from a business perspective, you want to make everything different so that people have a reason to buy the new version um, rather than just, you know, but I really bought it because I don't have this and I haven't played it in a long time. And nowadays on eBay, it goes for like hundreds of dollars and I just don't want to spend that on a board game. Okay, so Keller's Keep quest book. We get some additional cards here. Um, more dungeon pieces, I guess, for our enjoyment and amusement. So overall, I'm going to give this 
my thumbs up for most of this. And you can decide based on what's in there whether you want to get um, any of these, I guess, expansion quest packs. Uh, some of these miniatures you can see are, with both of these quest packs, are miniatures that you already have in the main uh, box. So if you are wanting to buy this because you need more of those miniatures and, and you're going to use more of those miniatures, that's great. If you if you realize that you could probably um, you know, find another way to get similar content or make up your own content that's kind of similar to that, you can make that decision with a quest pack. Um, one thing that I like about the other one, the Mythic tier one, is that all of these all these miniatures that came with the Mythic tier are all different. Uh, we get a different abomination here than what we get with with this. We get the same one we have in the original one. This one's different. So it'd be nice if they were going to do these, that they would give you some different, just some different miniatures to buy. That way, when you buy it, you really feel like rather than me getting more of the same miniatures, you get new ones. You know, you get something new that looks a little bit different that's maybe in the same class there. So anyway, that's all of it. And uh, it came shipped really good, no damage. Um, generally, I think the miniatures are pretty high quality um, and uh, they're pretty detailed. Uh, they're a little more detailed probably than um, I would like for my own like painting skill if I wanted to bother to paint these. But I probably won't paint them. I'll probably just play with them as is. But if you wanted to paint them, um, you probably could. So thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Boy, I had a book out here. Newest book, The Wasting Desert. Um, another thing I'm doing right now, why I haven't made a ton of content, is I'm doing a significant revision and rewrite on the next Moonsong book, which I'm trying to get out as quickly as possible. That's what I've been doing the last few days. So anyway, you can buy this. It's 99 cents for the ebook, and I don't know how much the paperback is. Four or five dollars, so for the physical edition. Anyway, guys, thanks so much, and... Uh, I will see you all next time. Let me know what you think about this gigantic extra set of stuff, this reprint, and whether it's something you'd be interested in. I got it, and I'm excited to play it with my son and with maybe my brother-in-law and, and other people uh, that I know who might want to play a game where you can sit down and do a dungeon crawl right there. So anyway, thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.